What's up guys? My name, let's not get the smoke in there. What's up guys? My name is Cameron. This is my editor, my right hand man, one of my Yo. really good friends, Andre right now. Um, we're just gonna start up a little podcast, see uh, a little bullshit a little bit and see, uh, talk about like everyday life and rapping, uh, trying to motivate a little bit, talk about everyday life struggle. Obviously we're not some high class or uh, high class people like that. So talk about like, you know, instead of relating to a big celebrity and stuff like that, like you guys can relate to us and uh, just talk about stuff that goes on in everyday life. Um, so yeah, this is Andre. How would you uh, describe that you even got like involved with Kicks Not Bricks and me itself? We, I remember, so we've kind of, we've been friends for a little while. I remember that. Like we, we used to ball a little bit when we were younger and we had like some, some mutual friends and stuff like that, that we kind of connected and, yeah. and became friends and stuff like that. I always knew who you were and I knew you were doing like all this shoe stuff and, and yeah. reselling clothes and stuff like that. Um, but I think the, f we started balling like pretty recently. I want to say like yeah. a couple months ago, like we really, we started going to the Y a lot yeah. and we were just hooping and shit. So I think that's like when we started getting a little bit closer and I know Dan and yeah. uh, Calvin were already working with you and Pac yeah. too at yeah. the time were already working with you. So um, I remember just one day you're like, hey, do you want to like help me out with some of this stuff? And, and I was I was obviously more than yeah. <clears throat> more than willing to help out because uh, before I was doing anything with you, I, I was helping out one of my other friends with her social media account and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I've always been into social media and, and all that type of stuff. So what you got it up to. I mean, it's not some like helping out. Like you got her to where she is today, where she's getting uh, um, brand deals and just going crazy. Her bank account's looking a lot better than it did before uh, she met you. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, you're getting, what was it from like 50 followers? You got her like 3000 followers in like a week or something. Uh, she was, she, I want to say she was around like 3000 followers. Yeah. She was like when she first started and it was just like, this is through TikTok too, for a little context. Yeah. Yeah. So she had, when she was buzzing a little bit on TikTok with 3000 followers, like early on when TikTok yeah. was like, just kind of became popular for like that age group people in college and stuff like that because it started off as like a little kids app yeah. like people yeah. looked at it as like just that new just app like that the vine. little seventh and eighth graders are on and stuff like yeah. that um so, but she she was doing well like by herself like three thousand followers at the time mm -hmm. was was pretty cool so what I, year do you think that was she was a freshman in college so 2014 word or no, no no sorry sorry <laughs> yeah. sorry sorry 2017 <laughs> or 18 word um, yeah, that's probably right when TikTok came out too, because Vine was down for some years. Yeah, then, it started with Musically. I think. Yeah, it did. And then yeah. it, and then TikTok TikTok bought it out, and yeah. uh, that's what it became. But yeah, she was she was doing pretty well, and I just remember reaching out. Like we we were always tight. Like yeah. I, I was friends with her like throughout high school and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I just reached out and was like, uh, do you do you want some help? Like. Uh, trying to grow your following and stuff like that just because it was something I was interested in I wanted to like try that out. Oh, yeah. I've always wanted to do something like this, but never really had like the um, The courage to like be yeah. online and, and create content by myself So like I it was cool that I could like live vicariously through her with yeah. her account growing and stuff like that but mm. I just remember we, we started with like a nice cool little plan where it was a schedule of content coming up with content and it was a nice little steady growth and then all of a sudden she just she caught so much traction at one time where i think we did uh 200 000 followers in like two or three months it was over the summer wow and uh I, she went back to college her sophomore year mm. and um maybe it was maybe she was already a sophomore when it happened and she went back her junior year mm. and um she went back to school and uh there were like people on campus like coming up to her asking mm -hmm. for pictures and like oh my god are you Bree soccer and stuff like that yeah. and like that was the first moment where we like free pom oh little, shit little free like, promo right there too for Bree soccer yeah 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 so, no uh, she's a homie for sure she gets around three followers it's from us <laughs> <laughs> what is she at now do you even know is she uh, over a million nah she i want to say right under five hundred thousand, which word. is which is great yeah, um, over the last no couple years doesn't. yeah um, and they're and around these parts and like Syracuse Liverpool yeah. especially um, a lot of people like a lot of younger kids know who she is I mean yeah. she's like gets people coming up to her I know there is businesses local businesses that yeah. are reaching out and asking for like brand deals and stuff like that so like honestly good for her yeah that's dope and kind of like bouncing off what you said too like just for Syracuse and everything but Syracuse is like slowly coming up there is like a ton of talent in Syracuse that no one really sees but it's so hard to like 
go out of your shell to, just to get your content or whatever you do to get out of your shell for Syracuse because one, people are so scared to put themselves, put themselves on the internet. Two, they think like just because you reach the Syracuse cap for like music and stuff like that, like you got a couple hundred people who, who mess with you in Syracuse that you can't go farther than that. That's one of the biggest things people struggle with is that just because you reach the Syracuse limit doesn't mean you can't reach like like other states to the side of you, even country level, or even even like globally. Like there's no, people. Scory is one of like one good example. Like he was in Syracuse. Personally, I never yeah. heard of Scory when he was bumping like that. But yeah, yeah. like now he's out and like like resides in LA now and stuff like that. Yeah, even yeah. like Post Malone is a good example. Yeah, you know Tusi. Yeah, he's from Syracuse. Yeah, and yeah. It's crazy because those are two prime examples. Even Tuesdays by the area uh, score. Yeah. But you can really make it out of here and get out of that little bubble of Syracuse. And you just got to really apply yourself and push yourself and do the things you don't want to do. That's yeah. the biggest thing. No, I hear you. There's always that like stigma that there's nothing to do around yeah. here. And like, in a sense, like everything that things have like started to get old and stuff like that. Yeah. And like, you definitely outgrow like yeah. this place. Like at some point, you you obviously you enjoy where you came from but at the mm -hmm. same time it's like you, you want to be bigger you, than that exactly you yeah. can only go so far living in a place like this and i feel like a lot of people who kind of have this aspiration to do something as mm -hmm. aside from a nine to five they they kind of struggle with the idea yeah. that they can only get so far here and it's it's hard to be able to just pick up and move and and try yeah. to adapt in a different place with people you don't know but it's like i want to say it's almost like crucial for you to do yeah. that to for to sure. keep what you got going like you got to yeah. give yourself a shot and yeah and definitely like even um even to like bounce off that too like the nine to five for example is like i was working at sprint for um probably like a year or so and some change but like and then COVID hit and then we were down and i used all my unemployment money and i was just buying stuff online not for myself but like using my money to make more money and then when COVID kind of stopped a little bit kind of took a pause i uh I, I went back to work for a little bit and I was just sitting there. I used to work in the mall and I was just sitting there and I was like, this is just taking away all of my creative mindset that I have. Um, and I was like, I, I have to leave. Like I was making money while I was working at Sprint. Like people would come to the stores and I would still sell, sell stuff to them. But I was like, I cannot sit here because I'm, I'm thinking about another company when I could start my own. So that's like, that's what I did necessarily. Like I just, uh, just took all the money from unemployment, invested probably like 20,000 into the business and here we are now in uh, office space and stuff like that. But I'm not trying to like gloat or or, or trying to say like, no, like I've made humble. it so far. Like I, I haven't made it far at all compared to what I want to be or what it could be. But that's just like, um, like. Nah, you got to give yourself your, some roses though. Cause like, you yeah. got to think about where you started with all this. Like, yeah. I, I mean, you should talk a little bit more about it, but like how this all came to start anyway, like yeah. just like from the beginning. So. Like, what how it all started was from like shoes so i used to just i was always passionate about shoes uh it all started in like ninth grade when i was um i got a pair of son of mars uh it was these jordans this was 2013 so we're coming up on almost 10 years um but i got these son of mars going into ninth grade school um i rode my little bike down to uh i, I think it was like a tony hawk bike or something i rode my bike down um to uh, the plaza and i met with the biggest dude in my life. It was the scariest moment in my life. But um, yeah, I bought these shoes for $40, wore them to school. Um, I think I sold them for like $90 or something like that. I was like, that was cool. So I just started like just trading my way uh, up to shoes and little, it just kept going and going and going. Uh, I was like almost wearing like a different pair of shoes like every single day to school. It was just ridiculous. And um, as like probably like 11th grade hit, I was making enough money um, to like pay for like my car insurance and just little stuff like going out to eat and stuff like that and I was like, you know, I'm just not making I didn't really think of it at the time like this could be a business But yeah, it all just kept going and going and going um, no, So yeah, and then that uh, That happened that I went to a local show in Albany in Albany, New York Which is around two hours away from Syracuse, which is where we're at um, I went there and this guy I was selling these shoes I only had like one pair of shoes, but I was still making my way up um, to like a more higher value value pair of shoes and um, this guy saw me just selling shoes. His name is Cherish uh, He saw me he had a table full of like 200 shoes and he asked me 
Um, I bought a pair of shoes. I, I'm, I'm most positive it was a pair of LeBrons, and I bought them for 70 and I think I just sold them for 120 literally like five minutes after. So he asked me to go behind his table. You don't even know this, so this is dope. Yeah, no, so, I haven't heard this. He asked me to go behind his table and sell shoes for him. So I did. I sold a ton of his pair of shoes, probably half of his, half of his inventory. Uh, no, probably around like 75 pairs of shoes in the matter of like four hours at the show. And um, little do you know, I was in college too at OCC at the time. So uh, I, a little before you know it, he was asking me to go out to shows with him every single weekend. So I was in college. I was getting really good grades in college too, which is I never would have thought of, um, which I didn't really have good grades in high school. Uh, but I was in college, OCC, getting good grades. Meanwhile, I was traveling out to New Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, Boston, even Charlotte, Washington, and just stuff like that. Like every single weekend doing shows with them, doing, making like $200, $300. Um, but yeah, that's how it all started. And then uh, in my second week of my second semester, he called me. He was like, hey, is there any chance you would like want to work in New York City? So I worked at a place called Sneaker Fleet when I was 18, and which is right on Broadway, which is a super busy place and like the mecca of shoes and stuff, obviously in New York City. Um, so I worked there for not, it honestly wasn't that long. I only worked there for, I think, like three weeks, but still I was 18. We had to drive two and a half hours there and then two and a half hours back every single day. It was tough, bro. It was like a mental, mental thing. I Damn. obviously wasn't old enough or like couldn't comprehend it, but I stuck it out for like three weeks. But there, like working there uh, or working there helped me out so much where I am to like, not, I, I'm, I don't want to say it again, but I'm not anywhere like obviously like a great position or anything, but I'm in like a, a comfortable position. Um, but yeah, working there, um, just opened my eyes so much and like taught me so much. And I was really literally working with sharks there because we were in like a, a flea market type setting where we rented out racks that were maybe like, I don't know, this tall from the ground. And there was only like four different shelves and they were only probably like this wide. And we had, uh, I think it was four of them. And, and every month one rack was $2,000. So you had to make the money over there with the limited amount of space you have. And so he was spending literally around $8,000 a month for rent um, wow. at, at there just to only have like maybe like 15 pairs of shoes on the rack for $2,000 a month. And is that like, is that profitable? Like, is, it, yeah, or and is this, it more you just like gotta, a, you gotta know, um, you first, you gotta know people that are gonna sell you shoes in bulk. Um, I remember one time, so, so yeah, I mean, it is profitable. Uh, but you just gotta you gotta have the connects before you can go in there. You can't just go in there buying right, right. a couple shoes a, a week or anything. You gotta buy like hundreds of shoes a week. I remember when the uh, it was the tw it was when the Yeezy Creams came out, and uh, for some reason we couldn't bring the boxes. We couldn't bring the boxes and the shoes together. We had, we put around thirty pairs of creams. This is when they were going through for seven hundred dollars. We put around thirty pairs of creams in this trash bag, walking through Queens at midnight oh, with the trash bag well, full of dangerous. creams. Maybe I can't do the math in my head, but maybe like twenty one hundred twenty I'm stupid, but <laughs> uh I don't know how much it's worth. I can't I'm dumb right now. But um yeah, a ton of a, a ridiculous amount of money in the bag. But when you look at us like you wouldn't think like that dude has the trash bag, like there's probably some some stuff that's worth something in there. Um, traveling around like that in Queens, it was just nuts. And then we had to drop the shoes off, then I drop the boxes off at a different time. And but that was even unreleased Yeezys. So we were selling the creams for seven hundred dollars before they even came out. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Wow. To know people that know people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So like a nine to five job. Coming back to what I said twenty minutes ago, but nine to five, it's like, it's. It, 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 I don't want people. Some people think it's corny to work a nine to five, but I, I don't. Obviously, I don't think it's corny at all. Like you got to do what you got to do. But there is, don't limit yourself to only that. There's so much more you can do outside of it. You just got to find something you're passionate about and um, find a way to make money off it. That's something that I really enjoy. Um, there's so much little things that, like even making a product and stuff like that, you can just make a product, sell it in crazy um, quantity and stuff like that, even for a little money. But if you're selling your product for $2, two dollars each and you sell four, 4 million of them, like you're still a millionaire at that point. No, yeah, yeah. And to go to touch up on what you said about the nine to five yeah um i think it's important to have like that nine to five yeah. job where you're using that income to not only uh provide for your mm -hmm. life but that extra money to be used towards these different businesses yeah. creating a product whatever whatever mm -hmm. your thing is um because i think there's like there's a lot to be said for for somebody who 
grew up with a traditional family yeah, and, go and go to college and they want mm-hmm. you to get this this job and and sometimes like it, it's hard because you you have this pressure that you have to do that type yeah. of stuff and and in society today like your people are always asking oh what do you got going on now what yeah. are you doing and stuff like that and it's sometimes it's embarrassing when you have something that's going on that you can't say that you're making money from right now mm-hmm. but you have this vision and you it's hard to explain that to somebody else and yeah. so but I think that nine to five is is where I, I remember you were saying you were working a job where you were losing like some of that creative yeah stuff. sit in there yeah and it's like you got, you want to try to find something that works best for you like personally right now um, I help my dad out with catering and stuff like that he, yeah. he caters for the uh, the Mets and the Crunch and then I also work with uh, my uncle at like this uh, yogurt stand and stuff yeah. so it's like it, it's embarrassing to say that to people um, yeah. about like where uh, I'm working and stuff like that and like my way of making money mm. but um, the camera I don't know why I don't know what's wrong with it but sometimes it just stops recording um, and we probably just lost our huge train of thought uh, but yeah we're gonna get back you were talking about working at the yogurt stand and working uh, and for your dad's company doing the catering and how um, yeah. doing like the nine to five stuff yeah it's just like it, it's tough because it's it's embarrassing sometimes trying to say like all all of my friends working at some of these different jobs high, like, like high companies and stuff yeah yeah it's like they're working for sales or people are nurses and stuff like that and they're yeah. like what do you got going on and it's like it's hard to explain this because at this like mm-hmm. st- point in time I'm not making money doing this but I also don't want to get in that trap where I find that nine to five and I make excuses yeah. and then I have more responsibilities coming in my life and mm-hmm. I don't have time to pursue something like for this. For sure. And um, so I, I think the the nine to five is good for people that know that that's what they want to do for, for the, the rest, rest of, of their, their life. Yeah, yeah, like if and that goes with college too. I think if if you don't know what you want to do going into college, yeah. don't go. Take yeah. take years off. People always say oh, if you take a year off and then go to college, you'll never end up going. Okay. Uh, that's just, it's it's untrue. Like, yeah. if if you want to go back and get that job, you always have time to go to go get that degree and get the job mm-hmm. that, like, you wanted and stuff like that. But really think about what you want to do and if that's something you actually want to do for the rest yeah. of your life. Like, there's people who want to be doctors, lawyers, whatever. You have mm-hmm. to go to school for that. Yeah, like, that, definitely. It's like, go, go to college for that. But if you, if you want to be in business or you want to do something else like there's other ways that at least for business i I think i went to school for business and i personally thought it was a waste of my time it's Mm. it's they taught you money too yeah i'm not downplaying college or anything but no no yeah yeah, it's it's no it it is it was almost like a waste of time they teach you how to work for a business Mm. and not how to run one and it's like if you don't have that mindset if you're thinking bigger than being able to go work for a company like whatever and make mm-hmm. that that same salary and obviously it, it can increase and stuff yeah. like that but only it's not going to increase by a lot though too it's only going to increase maybe like a couple thousand yeah. a year as time goes on yeah and it's just like learning to like invest in yourself in your own time and stuff like yeah. that it's like there's like a huge there's like a huge life like blessing in mm-hmm. that yeah for sure and so that's why i admire what you got going on because a lot of people don't have the courage i know how much risk you take on like you you have expenses like this office and mm-hmm. and paying for hotels paying for vending spots not even knowing if you're going to make your money back sitting on clothes sitting on shoes all really? this stuff it's like there's so much risk in that and not everybody has the courage to take that risk not yeah. everyone's willing to sit on that money thinking oh i can't have this type of lifestyle because mm-hmm. th- nobody wants to sacrifice some of that stuff so i know you don't think maybe you're as far as you want to be now but yeah. you got to give yourself some credit because you're sitting in this room now and it's yeah. like when you were in eighth grade you probably didn't think this was even possible yeah no I, I didn't but like it's not it's not even just me bro like anyone could do anything they want to do it's just the fact that i like i just took the risk but it's not just me any single person can do it like you, I, anything you, you find passion about, dude, you could open up your own yogurt stand, you could open up your own catering business. You don't have to work for someone. Anyone can do it. Um, it's not just me. I just, I, I didn't even like apply myself to the fullest. It just knowing people like helped me out a lot and what they showed me helped, helped me out a lot too. But it's not just, it's not even, it's not even like necessarily about me. It's just anyone can do it. Like I can do it. You can do it. You can do it too. Yeah. Um, instead of just sitting around, you just got to get out there and just do it. Like there's so many people who talk about, I'm going to open up a brand this year. I'm going to open up this. I'm going to do that. You just have to do it. It's not like, 
there's it, it makes me so sad seeing all these people that I know have so much potential and I look at that I admire these people who are who, who are like starting the brand up more than anything um, because I want to see everyone do good and like really grind your whole your whole day there's like there's there's not enough time in the day sometimes um, but people yeah, just got to take full advantage of like every hour and just really grind and just make the life you want to live instead of sitting around and doing nothing that's the biggest thing people are just so comfortable with even just like working a nine to five like if you're sitting there and you're comfortable with that like that's completely fine but you can still get up and do something for like 30 minutes just to make you even like a hundred dollars like like that's 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 more than enough you can make you can sit there at your nine to five or you can or you can um work eight hours a day at your house and and make the same amount of money if not more doing what you love right and it's like and you also have the freedom you don't have someone telling you yeah. you have to come in at a certain time and you don't know where you could potentially scale that like yeah. obviously like we were saying before like you, your job will pay you that much but if you're at home getting this education learning how to do these yeah. things i mean like i don't want to say the sky's the limit but like it it really yeah, is it like is. you can, you, do, you anything. can do anything honestly anyone can do anything it's not even like even if you even if you don't think you you okay i'm going to talk about this but i i recently saw someone say something on facebook like um instead of using stuff that happened in your past like bad things like oh i wish i had this in my life so i could be this like i wish i had a functional like i'll for example like if i had a functional family i i i would have went to college or something like that like you can use that as an excuse or you can use that for fuel and like be like oh i went to college because i didn't have functional family and i wanted to be like the first one for that like i started a business because i didn't have functional family be like i just i sat home i wish i had uh uh, uh inspiration in my life to where i could start a business or something like that or you can say um i didn't have inspiration that's why i started the I don't know. I, it's kind. Of, it's kind of messed no, up. No, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's I'm like not explaining it, it good. But, yeah. No, nah, but I, I I understand what you're saying with the gist of it. I also think that it's cool that you um, you support other people and other small businesses, yeah. even if it's even if they're competing in the same market as you. It's because pe I feel like a lot of people think that they're giving their business mm -hmm. away when they're helping somebody else out. Yeah. And you, I. I've known you for the last six months in mm -hmm. like a business sense and you're never like that. You're, you're yeah. always willing to help somebody out and stuff like that. And I think that's cool because you know that that good karma is going to come back around. If you ever need help, the connections yeah. you'll make, I think it goes way further the mm -hmm. connections you make than any money that you can make doing 100%. this type of stuff. So recently I bought 73 pairs of um, these real tree print, real tree pants. Um, these camo pants and I was paying um, I got them all for a certain amount of, for a certain price so um, me usually I would always talk the person down like hey can I get like twenty dollars off this or that but everything but this dude owns two stories is already a millionaire and I paid his asking price off the bat because I think that me paying his price right now will easily make a huge better connection down the future than being like, yo, can I can I get like five dollars off a pair of pants or something like that? Hundred percent. It's not worth it. It's not it's not worth paying the five dollars less, trying to talk them down off off first impression compared to what you can do in the future. And just by like, I was talking to him for a couple of days before I bought the pants, and he was like, yeah, you should come down to my Waterloo store and just take a look at it. He literally said, he'd be like, yeah, it'd be a good opportunity for you, but. Um, I don't know. I, I think I had like a doctor's appointment that day, but it, this was like less than a week ago. I don't want to be like, yeah, I would. I wouldn't go down there now, but yeah, dude. Bill, even paying the extra amount of money, if you can, if you can spend it, is just completely worth it. Doing it as someone that's in a way, in a way better position, you that can help you get a position they're at or even farther. A hundred percent. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. What else you got? We can just we cut uh, we cut into something else. We uh um. I want to talk about like the skirt thing a little bit. That was kind of cool. Yeah, I don't want. Just don't bring his name up. We can talk about him, but like not. You know, yeah. just don't. No, no, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Well, so there's this rapper from Syracuse. He's yeah. he's an upcoming rapper. We actually just saw him at the bar uh, uh, last weekend. Uh, yeah, Coleman's, and, and that's how this whole thing started, right? Yeah, I was skunked out of my mind. I did not remember meeting him at all when you guys told me the next morning. Uh, I was completely out of my mind, like a little. A uh, little little teenager off uh, for local right there, but I was I was so late so. that night. I uh, <laughs> ended up uh, booting all over the car, and I had to pay forty dollars to get it uh, all cleaned out. But uh, yeah, so we were at Coleman's. Um, one of our friends, our very uh, close friend Dan Barberry, is a producer, a fire one at that, 
and uh, he saw um, this rapper walking the streets. Um, recently signed to a. He was signed to Comethazine. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I don't want to say that. Nah, I feel like we can talk about it because I just don't want to say his name. Nah, it's fine. Word. Okay. We'll keep it. In. We'll, don't say his name, but we'll say. I just don't want to say his name. No, I know. That's yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So but. he was recently signed to Comethazine. Um, but something happened where, uh, I think it was out of his control. So, um, the, they, they let him go for a little bit, but he's recently signing a big deal. Um, we saw him in the streets and we linked up, started chatting it up. And next morning I uh, messaged him. I was like, Hey bro, like it was me last night. Um, just want to see like, what's up. And you saw the messages, right? Yeah. 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 He's mad cool. Yeah. Like, super cool. Super cool. He's dude. a f- great dude. Like yeah. I, to be honest, like with, being signed to a label already before mm-hmm. and stuff like that having this conversation and like through like dms and stuff i would yeah. have thought that he would have been a little bit more like I- i'm more big time than you like kind of sure. big dick in you a little bit but he was <laughs> he was he was honestly mad chill yeah. like, he was he was supportive of like your brand and mm-hmm. and stuff like that yeah. and obviously vice versa like we were yeah. telling him like we're we're fans we're glad that yeah. uh he's taking his talents out of syracuse and pursuing sure. that I, dream I, like that's i was generally telling him too i was like yo like even so we didn't uh, really agree on a deal um because he i just like i'm in no way shape or form rich at all i'm just not comfortable enough with spending a large amount of money on um on really anything right now that i know i can't get like a huge return on because that is a huge risk right there um doing a brand partnership and having to rely on someone to be like yo like can you please post this picture and stuff like that but um, yeah, we just didn't agree on amount, unfortunately, but it would have been dope. Um, but yeah, he was uh, he was cool. He had eleven thousand on Instagram, but his it doesn't sound like too much. But his his views and stuff, I think a lot of people unfollowed him. But his his engagement was really nice. He had uh, like a hundred thousand views on uh, Instagram and everything on his videos. Yeah, he was a dope dude all around. Um, even though we didn't agree on a deal, I'm always gonna want to see like just even him like. I think he's even big for Syracuse. No, for real. And, he, he's really good. Yeah, and even seeing him just like make it out is is really dope to see. Yeah, super 100%. dope. Dan Dan actually put me on to him. Yeah. Uh, like, probably last summer because he mm-hmm. worked with him at the Red Brick Studio in Central Square. Wow. And uh, he, I, I wasn't there, but I remember yeah. he came in one day because he was working across the hall. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was just looking for some beats and stuff. And Word. he came in and freestyled and stuff like that. And Dan started playing me his songs. Yeah. And yeah. Also, Mike uh, Clements. You know Mike yeah. Clements? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, dude. This dude's he's killing he's it. Up. He, he, he's a producer. Uh, the Ivies with uh, Scory. He's making beats with Scory right now. And he's killing it. He's, yeah, he's dude. literally he's next nasty. Time. He's, he's got the complete, really good work ethic. And he's just in there chopping away at all nights. At all, all hours of the night, just Dude, going crazy. For real. At any time I went to the studio, this man is just straight locked in from the time mm-hmm. I got there. Like, he would look up, obviously, say what's up. Yeah. But and he then that's just, it. He's head yeah. down doing his thing, and I love it. Like, yeah. I, like cause in the in the studio, yeah. like, it's it's hard to get there. There's a PS4 in yeah. there. Like, there, it's hard to just, like, stay focused it's and sick. do that for the for yeah. anything. But, yeah. it, but for him, like, with the distractions, like, in the room and mm-hmm. his just focus, it's, like, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. And, and it shows, like... He, he, from, I mean, I know that he's been doing this since, like, high school. Mm. So, to see him, like, getting some placements with some notable... Big artists, yeah. yeah some notable artists, it's, yeah. it, it's, like, great to see that. For sure. But, yeah, back to Skirt. He was, he was a really good dude. Um, I hope, hopefully, you stay in, uh... You said his name. I don't care. God, Andre. Fuck. No. <laughs> Just keep it in, but, yeah. Nah, he's a mad cool dude, uh... Couldn't agree on the deal, but yeah, my bad. I cut you off. Go ahead. Where you, you said back to? Uh, nah, no, 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 you're good. Yeah, I was just saying he was a cool dude. I I hope like we stay in contact and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Just not even to do like a brand deal or anything yeah. like that. Just to kind of like root each other on a little bit. For um, sure. Just if any way later on in his career or your our career or whatever, mm-hmm. and we can somehow do a partnership with him, that'd be cool. Just knowing yeah. that we both came from Syracuse and mm-hmm. yeah. Anything else you, anything else we got to talk about? Events coming up soon? Oh, yeah, we got God Soul United this month. Me and Andre will be there. Hey, maybe we'll be uh, popping on TikTok by, uh, before that. Maybe on YouTube. Maybe we'll be jumping a little bit. Maybe people come up to us, but yo, Andre, I see you in the vid. <laughs> what a um, picture. Uh, wasn't there supposed to be someone cool going to God Soul? 
No, Dennis Rodman was going to go to Dennis Rodman is going to sneaker con. That's right. It's the same time though, right? No, it's a week before that in Washington. But Dennis Rodman was going to go, which is my complete all-time like favorite basketball player. I uh, yeah, I'm very devastated. Or else I would have went to sneaker con. But I already paid for the table for uh, God's soul. You know, your, boy, your, your boy's not rich. You, you can't afford to can't afford to go everywhere right now. But hopefully in the future. Yeah, you, but you're saying God's soul is better for 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 selling. For yeah, sell. for selling. Yeah. Uh, Stinger Con is definitely more of like a networking uh, place compared to uh, God's Soul. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, we're going to be there August, it's either 27, 28, or 26, 28. I think it's 27, 28. Word. Yeah, no, we'll be there, but we got a lot of stuff planned. We got a huge banner YouTube video coming out uh, the 25th of uh, August this month, so in around two weeks from now. And then um, we'll get the footage from. Got so I'll probably soul. upload that around September second or third. Yeah. Because uh, I'm you're gonna be working, and I'm not gonna you're not gonna get off that computer for a while. Yeah, you're just you're just not gonna tell me what to do. Yeah, we'll see, buddy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'll guys, take a couple of these sweatshirts to go on my way out. Yeah, I pay him ten bands every three months, <laughs> so we're we're on the way up. That's why I can't. That's why we can't afford to go to Sneaker Con. <laughs> but yeah, guys, we will tune back in. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, you do not have to work at nine to five. You do have to. For the meantime, if you're still in there, but you do not always have to be set in that life. Like you can e escape that. This is for any single person watching. You can escape that. It's not. It doesn't have to be reality. You can make it reality whatever you want it to be. You don't have to listen to social media. Andrew Tate, full send. Don't look up to those people because, I mean, I mean, it's they're good to look up to for what they accomplish, but like, don't compare yourself to some millionaire influencer on social media, that, saying I want to be like this because they're not. It's it's in front of a camera. They they deal with a ton of stuff outside of it, but. Yeah, guys. That was a good talk. Yeah. Yeah. Good first good first podcast episode. We're going to go run this back, see if it's... Whoa. What are we doing, guy? I thought... I thought... <laughs> All right. I was about to... I, I thought that was... That was, no, that that was, was for the video. You just... Yeah, were, nah, you can just I, cut me off like that. We got to redo right? the whole thing. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I thought we'll that was it. Back. it. Start yeah. it back. We'll, we'll cut this whole podcast. Hold up. I want to put that on your computer and watch it. I want to see how well that went. Okay. <laughs> That was actually dirty. Yeah, it'll definitely get better as time goes. For sure, dude. We're sitting on a fucking futon. 